So for every ton of copper sulfide, you'll find two to seven tons of nickel. Would it be unrealistic to get to 15 or 20 million tons? I don't think so. That's on copper. So what does that mean for the nickel? Multiply that again. So then people start to get a sense of how truly big this is going to be. Talking copper and nickel here with Power Nickel and Terry. Great to have you in Zurich. And again, some great news coming in today. Yeah, I mean, this uh, line zone is just incredible, right? I mean, the last three holes, we've gone from uh, 32 meters of 7%, 40 meters of 4.9. Today, 19.6 meters of 3.8. 2% copper equivalent. 3.82. Uh, 3.82. Yeah. Man. So it's, yeah, it's just uh, fantastic. Yeah. And, and uh, it's going to get better, I think. This has already been such a great run. Share price is trading at 80 cents and change. Yeah. So um, is power nickel still a good deal for investors right yeah, now? Yeah. I mean, we were just talking off camera. Like when we first started talking, we were 20 cents. And obviously, we, you know, we said this would happen uh, for different reasons back then. And I would say we're equally as good a deal at back then as we are today. So I, I feel like we're super compressed right now that this thing, someday you're gonna wake up and we're gonna be two bucks. Like, and it's not gonna be six years from now, it's gonna be, you know, in 60 days, 90 days, something like that, because of all this good news has not translated uh, and it will. This is a disclaimer, huh? That's yeah. a forward-looking statement. Yeah, it's a forward-looking statement and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm longest of anyone on this stock, so I'm preaching my own numbers, but, if you look comparably at, at us versus our peers, we're dramatically undervalued and we don't need to raise money. Generally, stocks move when you don't need to raise money and you deliver the goods. Well, are we delivering the goods? Yes. Okay. I mean, we invested on the 20 cent round two years ago, so yeah. I can definitely say hand to heart, the story delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I think uh, we're still in early days on the delivery mode. I mean, people, what they have to understand is copper sulfides, which is what we're finding on the top, of a nickel sulfide is what makes this a polymetallic deposit. And the ratio of copper sulfide to nickel sulfides historically in these orthomagmatic deposits is sort of between, so for every ton of copper sulfide, you'll find two to seven tons of nickel. So we're, math analysts will say to you right now, we're at five million tons of 7% copper. That's the analyst, okay? Uh, they say we may find up to 90 million tons. I don't know what we'll find, but if you take, let's say where we'll be in six months, we did 10,000 meters to get to this first five million tons. We're doing 30,000 meters right now, between now and the end of April. So would it be unrealistic to get to 15 or 20 million tons? I don't think so. That's on copper. So what does that mean for the nickel? Multiply that again. So then people start to get a sense of how truly big this is going to be. And that's why it's such a deal right now. Yeah, we actually have our research partner from Gold Invest, Sven. He's just joining in. Sven, please join us. And... Uh, we're just talking about the, the story of Power Nickel that's had an amazing run and uh, the correlation between the amount of copper you find versus uh, the amount of nickel that that might then uh, entail. And Sven, what's your view on this combination uh, that Terry originally started out purely focused on nickel? Now we have this kind of combo. Um, what's your take on uh, those two? To me, what's compelling is just grade and width. That's that's really what 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 matters here yep and yep. discovery potential yeah on these on these orthomagmatic deposits if you look at like everything from uh boise's bay to norils to sakati and xinjuan you know you'll find that if you find one ton of copper sulfide they'll range between two tons to seven tons of nickel sulfide averaging around five our experience will it be different can always be different, right? But I'm talking historically around the world and these types of deposits, this is the range. So if, if we've found 5 million tons of copper sulfide right now, you know, we might be 15 or 20 in six months. What would that mean for the nickel sulfide upside? The, you have to put some multiplier to that in that range. So that's why I'm saying that, again, like we're all investors. It's all about asymmetric risk. We'll, we still have to prove it in the ground as we've been doing, but clearly the uh, odds are in our favor. And that's, you always want to play the odds. Sven, your take on that? Well, um, my take is very simple. I, I was uh, very much uh, pleasantly surprised by the discovery. And probably you didn't expect oh, any, totally. anything like yeah. it. Right? It's, yeah. it's, like, it's like a second discovery. Isn't it, it? it is. It is. You know, I mean, uh, bottom line, we were looking for nickel sulfides. Mm -hmm. And, we, you know, 1.5% nickel sulfides, which we would have been happy to find. And we found this beast of a copper sulfide, which is like you're going from, you know, $250, $300 rock to six eight hundred dollar rock i mean who can count on that right so that was that's the gods of uh, of mining thank you gods <laughs> you know <laughs> better, better to be lucky than good we drilled this 
you know, for yeah. the right scientific reasons. Yeah. And we got lucky. Exactly. Yeah. And you still have the upside. I keep calling Terry uh, once a month and asking about CBMR. CBMR is this midstream manufacturing hidden champion uh, that uh, could provide a good uplift where Power Nickel already has a partnership in place. And yes, it has taken some time. You're in discussions, moving things forward. Yep. Uh, so hopefully we will be able to talk to CBMR. They've not made any video, any kind of coverage anywhere on any channel. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. And um, we look forward to uh, talking to CBMR for the first time. Yeah, for sure. Well, we, you know, we expect to probably get some news out on that in this quarter. It's uh, we There's other complicating business conversations going around that. That's why things have been delayed a little bit. But we're, uh, they, um, they're an interesting group and they're, you know, they, they're, uh, Client list reads like the who's who, right? You know, it's like I mean, they're family uh, owned, uh, run by a brother and a sister, uh, and they they provide products like the the copper safety on the one hundred dollar bill for the U.S. Treasury. So they have some nickel, very interesting nickel nano powders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, like you got you know McDonnell Douglas, Northrop Grumman, you know uh, Rayathon. It reads like a Fortune one hundred list of their clients. Tata, they, they they're uh, big in nickel powders. So nickel powders are used for three things generally, for uh, obviously EVs for the batteries, it's the preferred way to get nickel, uh, armaments, which unfortunately is a growth industry at the moment, yeah. and uh, the third is uh, 3D printing. So uh, so Tata is a big guy in 3D printing, and they're building a plant for them in India right now. Exciting times, Terry. Congrats again on 3.82 percent copper equivalent. Um, some fantastic results. And uh, thanks for Barfly here in Zurich, just next to the Park Hyatt, hosting us. Do come around, check it out. Very nice place. Thanks for supporting our channel and bye-bye. Cheers.